Hello, and welcome to the shop. It's been a while since I made a video, but uh, I've been working on a few things. And um, I figured I'd make a video about installing one of these uh, eBay special uh, tachometers on my lathe. Uh, they're just about ten dollars, and that, that includes the shipping. So what I did was I designed this uh, plastic part over here that holds the tack in place. Uh, this is the NPM sensor. It comes with a magnet. So what you really get is this: the display, the sensor, and the magnet. The wiring is usually not done, and you don't get a wall wart. Well, this thing has a pretty wide range of voltages between 8 and 24 volts. This wall wart was from equipment that has long since ceased to exist. And uh, this thing is a 24 volt wall wart. It's pretty slim line and uh, actually holds a very steady voltage. So, I used it. Overall, I mean, it's less than $12 in parts. Some scrap. This is what I'm going to use to make the bracket for the NPM sensor. This is one of those uh, stamped sheet metal keys, 7 16 and a 3 8 on the other end from God knows what. That's just been hanging around my, my toolboxes, collecting dust and adding weight for no reason. Well, it actually made its way into my scrap bin, and now it's making its way out of the scrap bin into... Uh, the lathe actually so without further ado the way this thing actually goes together it's quite simple I do that and this should just about snap into place uh, hopefully not breaking anything and there it is and uh, two one inch screws and I'll show you how that works and there it is put together the NPM and the wall work now there's one thing that I would change about this design is I never really incorporated a place to add a switch an out and off switch for this thing and for now I'm probably gonna just end up unplugging this when I don't need it but uh, most likely I will wire the wall wart in series with the lathe so when I shut down the lathe I shut down the tachometer you have to pardon my shop it's still I'm still working on a lot of things and one of the things that I actually need to do is I need to cut the edges off of this um, wrench and I'm gonna use my bandsaw and this is a vertical horizontal bandsaw at the end of the day I'm still gonna use a set of pliers to hold the wrench in there so I can actually cut it straight He's great tooling. And I'm getting some chatter.
now before somebody judges me on this um, that bandsaw is set at the lowest possible speed it's made to cut metal and it does so very very slowly low and slow so I can actually grab the blade and you'll watch my fingers just go up it's not gonna cut me and it's a very fine blade so it's not dangerous in either case still wear protective goggles what happens when you're done cutting? It leaves sharp edges. Always deburr. And they thought this thing was just for a museum. Ha! Huh. One of the things that a lot of people are very much tempted to do on something like this, where it nearly fits, so they figured, let me just go grab the next size hole up and let me hold this thing up and guide it all the way up until this thing catches and it either breaks a finger, tears off a finger, or at least cuts you. Be smart. I don't want to be a shop nanny, but be smart. They ha these drill, drill press vices cost next to nothing. Get one. Use this to fasten your work down and drill the holes with this thing. It'll save your fingers. That fits. First bend. Well, there it is installed. Some finagling with these angles over here. But uh, the magnet is here as well. A little hard to turn this thing. See, right there. The magnet is temporarily just stuck onto the spindle. I will most likely, not most likely, I'll, I'll dig out my two-part epoxy and just epoxy that in there. But for now, it's, it's not interfering. It reads properly. And I can close this. Now, just to prove that this thing is... Uh, reading properly I'm gonna throw it in back gear so I throw it in back gear I should be able to half the revs there there you go that's right 73 rpms that's in back gear let's change the pulley speed this is top speed now RPM.
not a bad little lathe. I will um, add the wiring schematic to the bottom of this. It's going to be on my blog, so you guys should be able to replicate this fairly easily, whether you want to use my 3D printed design over here. I'll link to Thingiverse, not Thingiverse, you imagine link in the description. And uh, that's it for now. I always wanted to add a tachometer to this lathe, so I finally did. Is it going to be useful? I don't know. That's really up to you. But to me, I'm a numbers junkie, so that's pretty useful to me. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, do whatever. $10. Can't go wrong. Alexa, play Pandora Radio. Getting across Pandora Station you listen to Pink Martini Radio.